Thank you for joining us here today. I am thrilled I have a special guest for you, and that is Caroline Mace. She's the author of five New York Times bestsellers. And her TED Talk, which was on how the little decisions in life are so important, has attracted over two and a half million views. So thank you so much for joining us, Caroline. Welcome. Oh, I'm delighted to be here with you. I'm just delighted. <laughs> oh, that's such a thrill. Now, let's just dive in at the deep end. All right. Now, I get a lot of comments and emails of people who are really struggling in this particular time, you know, this United States and even global dystopia that we're all trying to navigate. And people are feeling quite overwhelmed and feeling powerless. So I'd just be very interested how you respond to that. How do people deal with that? You know, for me, and I've taught it for a long time, that power is the fundamental ingredient of the human experience. Everything is a negotiation of power. Absolutely mm. everything. Um, from um, the human experience is all about how we experience power through choice, through attitude, through, through um, acts of creation. And um, power of the spirit within physical matter. And that's the nature of the human experience. And it's our choice whether or not we want to elevate that experience to a, this, a spiritual playing field, or whether we want to keep it on the uh, essential matter playing field. What level do we want to live our life? Um, yes. Do, do we want to live it at the level of stuff and be a stuffologist <laughs> and experience it at that level, which uh, pays physical dividends, but it does not pay any kind of meaningful dividends, which is why people at that level eventually become exhausted and they start to ask, you know, what's the meaning of this? And as soon as you do, you you begin the journey to the next level, which is the level of power at the you know inner level. What's my interior power about? I mean, the let's face it, we're people now who where the interior life is the new frontier. Inner space and outer space are like the micro and macro of the new frontier. So power and what it is, whether physical, spiritual, emotional, psychic, cosmic, is the theater of life. Mm. And how we engage that, what causes us to lose power, what causes us to become empowered, our capacity to empower others, is all that life is about. Mm. And that really is, that's everything. Yes, seeing it like that, absolutely. <laughs> As a sociologist, we also deal with the same issues, but it tends to be on the more nitty gritty, you know, use and abuse of power. Um, so I think with people, it's very hard when you're the odd one out. Right. So, for example, I have many viewers who would call themselves blue dots in a red sea because they live in a deep red state or they're surrounded by family, friends, work, colleagues or even partners um, who are buying into a lot of this um, gaslighting and conspiracy theories and, and stuff and they're feeling quite isolated. So where would you go with that? How to... You know how I look at that, Nina? It's really true. It's, um, it's classic behavior during a time of chaos. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and um, a good metaphor to use, really, is that 
Um, and this actually happened to me, which is why I find this metaphor so useful. Years ago, I was visiting a friend of mine in, in uh, New York. It was a hot August day, and, and um, New York is very hot on a hot August day. And I was uh, going into her building and she lived on the 24th floor. And as I was going down the street, you know, the cabs are bang, you know, just screaming at each other and the air is very, what we might call pungent or fragrant. And, <laughs> and uh, it's loud and it's crowded and it's steamy and it's, and when I got into the apartment building and I took the elevator to the, and I got to the 24th floor, she had this tiny little balcony, which is precious real estate in, in New York. <laughs> and I got a nice tea and I sat out there and it was an entirely different world, but at the same address as the yes. first floor, right? Mm -hmm. And isn't that just like consciousness? Think about yourself as once we're born with that building and we never change our address. Mm. All the movement becomes inside of us. And every floor is a different view of our reality. Yes. Right. And so when we're on the first floor, we take everything literally. Mm -hmm. and we, and we, but we have the smallest view of our world on the first floor where we look at something and we, we can, that's where we're going to get gaslighted because that's where we see the people up close and that's where it's easiest to resent them and to fall for the tricks of the trade on the street. Mm. And it's very hard, like in a building, every floor within us, every floor in a building is more expensive. It's more expensive to move <laughs> up. And it, it takes a lot of work to earn a lot more money to get that higher perspective. Mm. But every time you do, you see a much wider view of the very same thing that you didn't recognize yes. when you were on the yes. floor. And I realized that I could have said to someone living on the first floor of that building, do you realize you live next to the Hudson River and you can you could see the George Washington Bridge and you could see the Empire State Building and da 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 da. And they could have told me I was wrong because from the first floor you can't see any of that. It's so yeah. tiny and myopic. But in fact, you have this beautiful view of where you live. So when people have a view that's just of what's happening today on the first floor of their life, they can't see anything clearly. Mm -hmm. And I tell all of them, you have to expand your view of what's happening. That, that you don't understand, you have to go for a bigger picture that this is a time, we're living a time of evolution and you are getting caught up in the consequences. You're in the caboose of the train and not the engine. And you've yeah. got to get the engine. Mm -hmm. That I, if I came into your house in the midst of a, of a bad argument and I said, what crazy people, these people are insane. But I knew nothing about all the things that went ahead. All the, the betrayals, all the hard work, all the effort people had put into each other's lives. Mm. Who am I to judge in that moment? Because I happened to go in there on the one day that everybody was exhausted and they couldn't pull, you know. And that's what it's like to look at today and realize that at a time of change like this, mm -hmm. what's really going on is that there is a whole faction of people who do not want this world to move toward holism. Yes. They do not want this world to progress. And they don't want all the necessary stages of transformation to engage. And it's no different than when I see someone who has to heal something and they sabotage their healing. Mm. because they don't want to do what's essential to become a whole person. And part of that is that there are, we have it built into the psychic playing field of the world we live in. Our agreed upon um, shadow principles that are rooted deeply into Christianity that allow for vengeance that allow us to punish other people for our suffering mm -hmm. that's permitted where it says suffering should be rewarded 
that I am due something because I have had a rough time, that I can hold on to my pain because it's, it, I didn't deserve it. All of these, these kinds of shadow beliefs are uh, um, that, that I am owed something because I, I get to sue you, I get to do this, I get to hold on to grievances because they were not, I didn't deserve them. The words deserve and blame. Mm -hmm. That in order for us to progress forward, we have to get out of all of that way of thinking. And also, I think twin to that, it's the comfort and solace of the familiar versus the new. Yeah. So um, you often hear um, people say, oh, when's, when are things going to go back to normal? Yeah, right. <laughs> right? <laughs> normal being, you know, unarmed black men being shot on the street, 14-year-old girls forced to continue pregnancies, people working three jobs with no security, um, the school systems being run into the ground. Is that really where you most want to go? You know? and, and by the way, we have no assurance that that's not where we're headed. Yes. By the unless, way, incidentally. Unless. You know, mm. I mean, that it, it's exactly, this is that opportunity to, you know, to break down. The, another way to look at it is that the system of imbalance has reached such a point yes. of it can't tolerate any more like it. This is what the French Revolution was. This is what the American revolutions happen when systems become so out of whack yep. that, that the psychic field is so out of whack mm. that it just causes this, in, this rupture to happen. Now, how we deal with this mm. is uh, another thing, but it's an imbalance of power yes. in, in all its forces, you know, shifting the power from the east and the west, from the male and the female. It's just a huge, from nature to, it's, it's just an ecological imbalance, a sexual imbalance, a, it's an incredible, uh, it's an epic imbalance of power. Exactly. And because in the collective, we fail to address danger points and inequalities as they arose, it gets pushed down for so long. I don't know that we're capable of it. Mm. I don't know that we're capable of it. Mm. I really don't think we're that conscious to address all of the many imbalances of power that we have. I don't think. Uh, yeah, I think it's beyond that now. Yeah, for sure. I was mm -hmm. suggesting that you know there are different windows in history where people make an attempt to level the playing field and we've missed them all you know <laughs> well i think one of the great fault lines in the human species lena is that we fear empowering another person interesting and point yeah in order to address everything we're talking about we have to address the fact that we can't bear to empower the other mm -hmm in any way that would take care of these problems. Yes, we can't that's bear interesting. empower, we, we, we don't mind charity, but charity yes. is not empowerment. That's why we call it charity. And exactly. And in but sociology, actually, we talk of the deserving poor and the undeserving poor. Yeah. You know, so there is this, yes, people are fine after a natural disaster or if someone's husband's killed in an industrial accident, that's all fine. But don't yeah. expect as a musician to be supported. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And obviously that comes back to our somewhat artificial position, I think, in the modern world with huge cities. I mean, we're not meant to live with five million people who we don't know, you know, in terms of our human souls. So therefore we have to sort of shut down and negotiate these very narrow pathways through big populous environments. And I think that has shredded our capacity to recognize the other as us. You know, do you think? I, 
I, I, but I think we, but if you look at it, even at a microcosm, people find it difficult to empower their mates. Yes. To empower, I mean, the fact that we do not know how to use power, how to be empowered, how to empower the other, how to even pay a compliment to another person mm -hmm. without thinking that too much power I'm giving them in that compliment. Mm. How to recognize that person would be better at this task than me. So mm -hmm. why not turn it over to them? Mm. I mean, they have more talent at this than I do, but I, I would be better at what they're doing. I mean, mm. we don't know how to think in ways that would make the whole business of life move along better. Yeah. I mean, we just constantly create our own hell because we don't understand what true generosity and we're just that's the shadow side of us is in charge of all the decisions mm -hmm. yes and i remember on one of your videos you told the story of going on the pilgrim walk in spain compostela uh, and if you wouldn't mind just recapping that story here, I think, because it's so outside what we've been talking about. Give me the realization when I was walking yes. on the path. Yes. Well, I, I, it's funny because I just told it again because it really was so transformational for me. Mm -hmm. And that's that I, I was um, on the walk, um, the... Um, you call it the pilgrim's walk, but I mean, it, it, it's the, um, um, the wonderful walk across Spain. What is the other word for it? You've got, now I've got the word pilgrim in me, but it's. Yeah. Yes, I can't think the second, no. Wait, wait, what is the other way? I can't believe, I can't. can't the, the compass oh de la, uh, the way. way. The way, of course, the El Camino. Of course. The Camino. Camino. <laughs> okay, I was on the Camino. And um, it goes through, uh, you know, it, 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 the path goes through the woods and the forests, and then it goes into towns and villages. And so, and sometimes you're walking actually on a sidewalk in the city or a town or whatever. And, but everybody that's walking the Camino, it's obvious they're walking the Camino. They have backpacks on, they have their hiking mm. boots on, they're, they have things hanging off of them, they have, their, they have their coffee pot hanging on them or whatever, and they're all walking the same way. And everybody, um, at times you could be with a, you know, walking among a group of 13 and 20 people, and sometimes there's nobody and whatever, and there's little cafes along the way and little churches and, and everybody says, blessed Camino to you, blessed Camino to you. Wherever you sit to have a um, cafe, a t have a cappuccino or something, everybody talks to you, where are you from, where are you going, how long, but everybody, the conversation so open and it is astonishing. And everybody is walking the same way to mm -hmm. the church in Santiago to God, mm -hmm. every single person. And for everybody's got their own reasons, and but everybody is a pilgrim to God. And one day, we were walking in the city, and I just stepped off the sidewalk onto the street, just just like this, just like that, that one, just like that, literally this distance. And I was aware that I'm now in this city, and everybody's walking this way and that way, and nobody's making eye contact. <laughs> And I stepped into the field of chaos from the walk of grace, into the yes. field of chaos. And just at six inches, I would not have said blessed day to you. Yes. I, I instantly was out of that field. And as soon as I came on this, there was this mm. order of grace where you felt like you could bless everybody and everybody was going the same way and i thought am i crazy and i did it again <laughs> and i thought no this is like this crazy field of chaos and i stepped back on here and it was this you know slow walk mm -hmm. but everybody was the smile was accepted in accord 
it just, right. And then I did this again. And so then I waited, you know, the next day I did the same thing in a totally dip, different atmosphere, but it was the same thing. It was chaos and this calm grace. And I How thought fascinating me, to have that literal experience of such yeah. a thing. But, and, and, and then when I would meet people, how many said, I had to get back to this. This is my fourth Camino. This is my oh, sixth yeah. Camino. I had to get back. And this is what they wanted to get back to. Yes. This corridor of grace. How yes. sensational. This is great. Mm -hmm. Now, I have one more significant yes. question for you. <laughs> Again, many, many, many um, viewers reach out to me and for readings in particular to ask, I know I'm meant to do something. What is my purpose? <laughs> right. And it's not an easy one. Well, why would they think you know that? <laughs> why would they think you know that? Well, why exactly. would they think that other human being knows their purpose? Exactly. I can help them think about it and search for it, but it's not mine to give back. Exactly. So, so your thoughts on that? Well, what I, I always disappoint people. <laughs> because my whole job to that really is, first of all, if you are, you are looking, what do you think your purpose is? What do you think purpose is? How are you defining it that you are looking so hard for it? Why do you think it's a singular thing? Number two, are you being driven by the idea that it's glamorous? What are you looking for that is so difficult for you to find? And why do you think you haven't found it? What is disappointing you that you That's think so you haven't? Because in my experience, it's only decent, kind, compassionate people who ask the question. Mm -hmm. They're actually so often on the path, mm -hmm. you know, but as you say, it's about some sort of recognition or need For, to name it, it or something. You know. and they have this idea that purpose is occupational that it's job, ah, yes. a job, that it's something that needs to be recognized by others. Mm -hmm. they, they, they need to shift their understanding of what life purpose is. And they, they need to, to really, do they think that up until this moment they've lived without purpose? Mm -hmm. That they are still seeking purpose? Mm -hmm. where, where have they been? Mm -hmm. My response is, have you been without, are you, a, have you been a ship without a rudder all these years? Mm -hmm. I mean, wh what are you talking about? Why do you think you have not had purpose? And if so, why? Mm -hmm. then, you're t then, you, then you need to address why you have not made courageous directed choices. Mm -hmm. What is motivating you? Why are you without that? Yes. Um, but to back for the other side again for a moment, <laughs> I think people do have this altruistic urge, particularly post-retirement, perhaps, because we've been so structured mm -hmm. in a work life. And it's different for retirees who really know they want to golf and go fishing. And <laughs> But um, I think for a lot of women, they're looking for a new direction. I often suggest to people traveling because I think traveling is a great circuit breaker and it's a great eye opener. It helps you get that overview you were saying about being on the top floor as opposed to working your way up from the bottom to the middle. Um, well, that was a COVID choice. And, and now it's gone with COVID. So just before we finish, have you got any thoughts on COVID? Well, I think only God could stop the planet mm -hmm. with an illness that has the message, heal or else. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, and we, you know, Lena, really, we were headed towards some kind of catastrophe. It was in the air and everybody mm -hmm. felt it. Everybody mm -hmm. felt the sense of ominous something. And this was 
this is brilliant because it's not, it wasn't a bomb. It wasn't a nuclear holocaust. It yes. wasn't a political catastrophe. It wasn't a, 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 a catastrophe that sets the world afire with war. It is one that is universal. That it is just telling stopped. Us, it yes, stopped the world. The world. <laughs> And it's not the world, and it's bringing everybody with the message: you have got to heal. And it and it's healing the air. It's bringing. It's causing us to change our lifestyles. It's it's generating a number of changes through which we will the the domino effect will cause a different track of creativity. Yes. A different track of communication. It will initiate changes about the environment. It will, this is, this is the hand of God in many ways. Mm -hmm. And someone could say, oh, but all these people are dying. Well, a lot less are dying this way than through a war, I can assure you. Mm -hmm. And so, so, you know, there's always loss of life with any kind of major redirection. But out of this will come a better quality of life. Mm. So it will take a while for us to transition yes but always in these transitions there is a loss of life there is a change there was a but but out of it will come a better quality of life for everybody i hope oh yes oh look i'm so inspired by that so thank you so much Karen. oh thank you so very very much my absolute may pleasure. I just say, may I just say, I'm going to stop recording now and we shall just debrief for a moment. <laughs> I don't want to let you go quite yet. But thank you so much. I'm sure the viewers will love it. Thank you. My pleasure. Cheers.